you've gone all over social media. You were already a big deal when we met with you six months ago. A small ago. deal. <laughs> oh, I, I disagree. Well, uh, if you're a small deal, we'd be a micro deal. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello YouTube and welcome back. I'm Christian, this is Cody, and we are joined again by Soli Cayetano, aka Lattes and Lisa's, the one and only. She's actually one of the first ever guest hosts on our channel, so very excited to have you back. Uh, welcome Soli. Thanks for having me guys. Looks like you've been doing quite a lot on the social media space and in the real estate space. Excited to hear from you. What is going on? What is brand new for the world of Soli? Yeah, so I'd encourage you guys all to listen to, I think we had like four, maybe five episodes on out-of-state investing, and I kind of share more about my story, where I live in the Bay Area, how I got started investing in Cincinnati, how I moved over to Augusta, Georgia, and so for some context, I think it would be helpful if they went over to those videos as well, but still investing in Augusta, Georgia primarily. We've actually been flipping a lot of houses, and I know that you guys have some kind of thoughts on flipping houses, so I'm excited to get into that. Um, that's pretty much on the real estate side and then also building an academy for out-of-state investors. So we can dive into whatever you guys like to. So the flipping, uh, you weren't pro flipping a little while ago. I know we're going to talk a little bit about that in the future, but just on an overview for folks that have seen some of your videos in the past, what made you jump into that? Really the market right now. So when I first started investing in real estate, I was just a long-term uh, Burr investor. So buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. And then um, I started flipping a few houses in 2021 when it was seriously like impossible to lose. The market was just going up like crazy that you could make as many mistakes as you want and you probably would not lose very much money. And so that's kind of how I learned how to flip, right? And then the market kind of shifted again and I turned back into more of just a long-term buy and hold investor. Recently, I've been investing in um, very heavily in Augusta, Georgia in a very low cost market where with interest rates being at seven, sometimes 8%, you're seeing really minimized cash flow when you're using the Burr method. So we were thinking, you know, hey, we can cash flow 150 bucks a unit and we can, you know, it's fine. It's reasonable cash flow, great cash on cash return, but we're also building so much equity in these properties. How about we just flip a few to kind of unlock that equity and reinvest it somewhere else? So that's how we kind of got back into the flipping game. Okay, so are you planning on taking that and then scaling back into some more buy and holds down the road? Yep. What, what is the plan for Soli? Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't like flipping because they see it as like an active income job. You're not really building passive income. But if you can just take the profits from flipping and reinvest them into passive income, then you are building additional income streams. So that's exactly what we're doing. Instead of having to do the Burr method, we are actually generating our own capital from flipping. And then we're getting to put 20 or 25% down on properties and not having to use other people's money. It's fantastic. And that's – that – Logic makes sense to me because liquidity is very important. And when you're doing the Burr method specifically, it's one of the weaknesses of the Burr method is one of those R's is refinance. And if the refinance is now at 8% instead of 4%, that, that looks a lot different than it did two years ago when you were really getting rolling. Yeah. And I think it's that like you're kind of at least our strategy of Burr investing is we're for financing 100% of the purchase and 100% of the acquisition from private money. So essentially, we're all into these properties for $0. And then we're refinancing and still having $0 within the deal. So because you're so leveraged up and you're refinancing, you're minimizing your cash flow, where this is just a little bit of a different method where we can flip, access a bunch of equity, and then just do that traditional down payment. That's awesome. And we're going to get way deeper into that on the next episode. Uh, you're also... I mean, you've gone all over social media. You were already a big deal when we met with you six months ago. A small ago. deal. <laughs> oh, I, I disagree. Well, uh, if you're a small deal, we'd be a micro deal. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you've started to we scale up. Krill. Yeah, we are krill. Uh, I feel like every time I look at your channel, you have a new uh, series of balloons saying like, hey, I've hit the next 10,000 subs. Uh, it's been fun watching you grow uh, and absolutely blow up. Uh, I, I, we got to catch your Bigger Pockets episode very recently. What what number was that again that you were? Uh, for? It's bigger... not out yet. So I believe it comes out in about a month. It's like episode 814, I think it is. Okay. You were on, were you on the episode 800 with the advice for investors? I, I oh, swear I was. I yes. Okay. I was in there briefly I, with some advice on my worst purchases and all that good stuff. And I guess we were both in LA, but we just missed each other. 
Wait a minute. So we all make worse purchases and we all can lose money sometimes? What was your answer for your worst purchase? That was like the one where we froze. I haven't had a deal <laughs> by we, I mean me. Uh, that was the one that I was like, I don't have a good answer for this. The way it was worded was like. Um, they didn't ask us about our worst purchase. They no, it no? so was the time to bail on a strategy yep. or when a purchase oh, didn't work. You guys work, must have had different froze, questions. Because like they've all worked. But you have to remember we're creative finance guys. So we get to choose the price, the term, the interest rates, the balloon. So if like if we did a deal that didn't work, we really messed up because hmm. we were just dumb. We would, yeah, we'd have to be bad at math. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of froze on that question. We haven't had a bad deal. We've had partnerships that went sideways, and that is something mm. that we can always talk about. But um, we've had partnerships not go as expected. The deals have all been roughly as planned. Yeah, and on that note, excited to hear about how you do your partnerships in episode number four. Yes. I'm excited to dig into that because I think we're also going to do a video on partnerships. Now, Sully, that's where you're at right now, but that is not where you started. And what we found to be consistently true is what gets you to where you're at will not necessarily get you to the next level. Could you share with everybody why it's really smart to start with Burrs to build a foundation and, and really at what point it makes sense to step up into actually flipping some of the assets? Yeah, I think that that buy and hold rentals are very forgiving, right? It's like time heals all things. In 30 years, if you make a huge mistake, your property will probably go up way up in value where it doesn't really matter that you made that mistake anyways. And so my first many properties were just buy and hold rentals where I learned how to renovate properties, how to rent out properties, how to navigate the market, and how, like, how to do all that stuff and allow myself to make those mistakes. And so when you do flip, it is a lot less forgiving because you have a really short time frame and you're having to do a lot of things correctly. Manage steps, pick the right finishes, the market turns, what do you do? You have to be very accurate with your numbers. And so that's why I would say like, I feel like buy and hold investing is a really great place for beginners to start. And as you get more experienced, you learn a lot of the skills that it takes to be successful in flipping. I love that advice too, because I think too many people focus too much on the cash portion early. So they start with flipping as a means to get into buy and hold. And if you learn the art of holding, you can always hold, you can always expand. I like that you started with the Burr method and then have moved into a different strategy. We're going to give some differing opinions in the next episode, but if you are going to be exiting properties, uh, learning how to hold them first, 100%, that's the right way to get started. Absolutely. Well, that's a wrap for today. Stoli, welcome back to the channel. It is great to have you here, and we will see everybody else next week. Music